Chapter 9, The Day the Witch Revived. <laughs> Quadrillion. There's only one place you'll find that word on Rock and Jima. Gold butterflies flitted from shadow to shadow, dodging raindrops. Unless my memory is mistaken, this is probably the place. It was the chapel. See? I think we even ta talked about the chapel in the chat, Zimon and I, in our chat. That mysterious building, one of the oldest on Rock and Jima, which had been built at the same time as the mansion. It was called the chapel, but not once had Kinzo used it for worship, and the members of the family had never been allowed inside. There were strict orders that none approach it without reason, and its purpose has always been a mystery. However, all these mysteries got boring after several decades. At some point, everyone forgot the chapel even existed, and that splendid building passed in the thoughts of Rock and Jima's residents. Of course, this had been true for Beato as well. Beato, who hated boredom, had no desire to approach places that humans never went. Yeah, that's true. We had no idea where you would even enter a code. <laughs> Unless you maybe have to, like, press the letters of the whole... Uh... The whole writing, but that would be weird, too. Or would it? Her last memory was of the time she went in there to taunt Shannon as she tried to clean. There can be no doubt. Wait, something was mentioned last stream? <coughs> that is it. Quadrillion. Beato looked up, above the door of the chapel. There was a relief display over an arch. English words were written there. You will be blessed on only at a probability of a quadrillion to one. Huh. So you thought that was the probability of someone solving this riddle? This chapel was built long ago. If there is a device like the one I imagine, Kenzo must have prepared that appetite riddle many decades ago. He must have been planning to use it as a ceremony for choosing a fitting successor at all that time. However, that ceremony is now a ceremony to open the door to the Golden Land and to my resurrection. When I snapped my fingers, the ground bulged and several snake-like dead trees sprouted up. They twisted around each other to form a ladder which leaned itself against the door. If my guess is right, there's some sort of device in that relief. Oh, it is? I did think of that. Oh, a long time ago, actually. <coughs> but I thought... I don't know, I, I, I... Didn't think somebody would actually have to ring a ladder. I slowly climbed the ladder. Because of the size of the door, the relief was very high up. This close-up, it looks much bigger than it did from the ground. Come to think of it, whenever we cleaned the chapel, this relief was the only thing that Genji always made sure he polished himself. I always wondered why he didn't leave something so trivial, trivial to the younger servants. I thought it strange, but nothing more. The master treasured this relief, so the, the head servant cared for it himself. I always accepted that excuse. But now I understand. There must be something in this relief and Genji polished himself to make sure that no one else accidentally found out. So am I to sacrifice the six letters chosen by the key from Quadrillion? The tips of my finger touched, fingers touched the key. My fingertips were soon covered with dust. However, I quickly realized that there was something strange about it. Don't tell me this letter. No, it had to be like this. There would be no other way to offer up sacrifices. Beato grabbed the ladder cue, and after lightly playing around with it in various ways, she pulled it out with a slight clunk. It didn't? Oh, I, I was... I kind of... No, I, that was actually clear to me. I just never thought that uh, it would really be <laughs> something where people had ring a ladder. Also, it kind of sounded to me like when Erika and Batla solved it, I, somehow I pictured them doing something on the ground or something. I don't even know if the text sounded like it or not. But, like, I, I think I always pictured it as some kind of text above the door. Just as I thought. Here's the cue I pulled out, and this part's a wedge. No, it's a key. The key was attached to the back of the queue and had been stuck into a keyhole in the relief. I see. In that case, I know what to do next. Very good. This queue key is a wrong answer. Enough with you. 
Beato callously tossed the Q key aside. This was the first sacrifice. She kept on pulling out the keys for the six letters, representing the key. So A will also be sacrificed, and both E, I's, and then the N at the end. Now I only sacrifice one L, but unfortunately there are two L's here. There were two L's. I didn't know which I should sacrifice. I tried pulling both out, but the keys were of different shapes, so one is the right answer and one is the wrong answer. Well, there are only two. If I make a mistake, I can just try the other one. Unless messing up sets up a trap. Uh, that blows up the island, of course. Thinking it a waste of time to sit here worrying, I decided on the rightmost L and pulled it out. Five letters remained in the word. And now the first twilight is over. On to the second twilight. On the second twilight, those who remain shall tear apart the two, tear apart the two who are close. The D and R are close. What does it mean to tear them apart? Do I pull them out? But if I do, there will only be three letters left. By this point, I was able to make a good guess at what the gouge and kill lines meant. Gouge and kill probably means to turn the keys and take them out. Maybe you take them out and put them in again, but very far apart? In that case, the parts about going from head to leg must mean starting at the left and going right. If that's the case, there must be five characters left on the board. In other words, tear apart doesn't mean kill. If so, then we can read tear apart to mean putting a gap between the D and R. Yeah, maybe that? Like, you just... But how? Once again, there are two ways to do it. Do I remove the D and move to the left? Do I remove the R and move to the right? You could also do both. After pondering this for some time, I realized that both choices were wrong. Or you could put the D at the very beginning and the R at the very end. No, that's not right. I've had it wrong ever since I removed that L. A short while ago, I removed the L of the two L's, or the right of the two L's. However, if I had removed the left one, it would look like this. If you line it up this way, it's easy to see the next step. The R gets shifted to the right. This way, all of the letters are spread out evenly. Oh, okay, I guess you could do that as well. I would never have thought of that. This must be it. And this next part is another tough one. Praise my name? It's already clear that this is a word game. Those who remain shall praise my noble name. Just what are the remaining five letters supposed to do? Probably change their orders to form a word. U-D-R-L-O. Uh, Lord U. I don't know, you... What should be done about those these five letters? Praise my name, but your name is not Udalo. Huh. How can I get stuck after coming so far? How are these five letters supposed to praise a name? That man's name is Ushidomiya Kinzo. Is the U part of Ushidomiya? No, several letters don't match, and there aren't really enough letters to make Ushidomiya. <laughs> Dr. Lu. <laughs> Dr. Wu. One thing is certain, my name must refer to Kinzo. Then does the U stand for Ushidomiya after all? Like an initial. Then what do the D, R, L, and O stand for? <coughs> they can't mean Kinzo. Uh, raging lunat lunatic dickhead. Do the R and O stand for Rokkanjima? The master of Rokkanjima, Kenzo. Not nearly enough letters. <laughs> D's for batteries. This really left me totally confused. However, there were only five letters left. There can't be too many possible combinations of those letters. I could use process of elimination. Thinking I'd play around with it, I pulled out the U. There were four letters left. D, R, L, and O. <coughs> oh, Lord U. My idea that the U stood for Ushidomiya was like a heavenly oracle. When I removed the U, I thought of making a word with the remaining four letters. He even called himself Lord Goldsmith. These four letters spun around in my head, changing their orders, and latched upon a single English word that would serve to praise Kenzo. It's Lord. Lord. I had absolutely no basis for it, however, it was like a flash of inspiration. I quickly changed the letters around before that flash faded from my mind. Lord Yu. Ushidomiya. Lord Ushidomiya. On the fourth twilight, gouge the head. 
Oh. Uh -huh. It was a key, so it wouldn't have turned if it was the wrong one. But it did turn. I managed to gouge it. I gouged the first letter, the L, with a click, and then pulled it out. Next, the fifth twilight. Gouge the chest and kill. The O was gouged and pulled out easily. Then the R. Next, the D. And finally, the U. When I turned the key of the U, I could feel a resistance as though some device had been activated. I waited for something to change, but nothing did. However, I had felt something happen. A secret door must have opened up somewhere around here. Waiting around won't accomplish anything. I've probably done everything I can here. All the letters in Progillion have been removed. On the ninth twilight, the witch shall revive and none shall be left alive. So this way has the witch... Have I revived? So yeah, none shall be left alive is then referring to the letters because they are all gone now. The tenth twilight. At journey's end, you shall attain to the power of the golden land's treasures. Woods and for the last time. When I stepped down to the ladder and looked around, I immediately noticed a small change. That lion statue. At some point, the lion statue in front of the chapel had turned to face a different direction. How did that work? Oh, wasn't there something with Erika and Battler as well, where they were like something pointed into a direction? Did Kinzo plan up this extravagant device back when he first started building on this island? I walked up to the lion statue and stared at it. Other than the fact that it was pointing a different direction, nothing had changed. In that case, is the lion looking at something in particular now? I followed its line of sight and saw another lion statue. Oh, that's what you meant. Huh, didn't even notice that. And that lion statue had also changed its direction. Interesting. So follow the lion guide posts. As intricate as ever I see, Kinzo. I wasn't complaining anymore. I felt a bit of respect and awe at Kinzo for setting up such an intricate device and having it go undiscovered for all these years. There were lion statues standing like guardian deities at the entrance and the corners of the chapel. The direction they faced had changed, pointing around to the back of the chapel. There was something there. Oh. It was no longer a surprise. This was after the contraption with the letters. After being guided by the lions. So when a gaping open secret passageway appeared, with stairs leading down to the darkness below, it wasn't surprising to me anymore. So is this the entrance of the Golden Land, Kinzo? Did you find it? Grandfather's gold? Yes. It took ages and ages, but I had reached the Golden Land. According to the previous games, there was an underground VIP room there, along with ten tons of gold, right? I guess the entrance is there, but only opens when you do all the key things. It's probably some, like, hidden thing below the ground. I mean, you could set up something far below, something like, uh, that is covered by normal earth and all, but that opens with a certain mechanism. I don't think it was just, like, there, there was an entrance all the time. I'm pretty sure it was probably below, like, the normal ground, and if you do the whole key thing right, it uh, there's a, the mechanism will, will, will cause it to open, like a secret door. Yes, after going down a rough stairway, there was a door at the end of a passage. Inside, it was a b it was beautifully furnished, a true VIP room. And was the gold all you found there? Yes, at the time. It would be a lie to say that I was not dizzied by the sight of all that gold stacked high. Might have been an entrance to the to the to the base. The army base and all. Because remember this was this was once a secret base. Is this real? I lightly touched the pile of gold with my finger. It was hard and cold. I must have imagined that it would crumble like a sand castle if I touched it. Now there could be no doubt. This certainly was a ten ton pile of gold ingots. 
Considering the amount of gold I had just found, I figured I ought to be crying out in delight. I didn't really feel like laughing, but I thought it only good manners to do so in a situation like this, so I forced it out. Because of this, only a few feeble laughs slipped from my mouth. At that moment, even stronger than any delight was a feeling as though I'd entered a place I wasn't supposed to be. I couldn't think of what I should do next, now that the epitaph's riddle had been completed. Then I heard approaching footsteps. It's gotta be Genji. It was coming from the stairway I had entered by. Or maybe it's the creepy doll from the VIP room. Just slowly walking down the stairs. Even though it shouldn't be possible. But it's walking down the stairs. The doll. <laughs> no. Let's not, let's, let's not uh, think of that. Someone was coming. Could it be Kenzo? If he finds out I've been a, out I've been in a place like this, will I get scolded harshly? Well, I would expect the opposite to happen. I thought about hiding and forgetting this ever happened, but my legs wouldn't move. I kept standing there, stunned, in front of the pile of gold, as the footsteps drew closer and closer. The door opened, and I saw who it was. It wasn't Kinzo. I knew it. Is he gonna tell her now of who she really is? You. Did you reach this place by your power alone? Well, except for the huge hint you gave me, indeed. For some time, Genji stared at Beato in silence as though he was calculating something. <coughs> then he slowly clapped his hands together. He did it again, over and over. It took quite a long time before I realized that he was applauding me. The master has said that he will hand over the gold and the headship to the first person who solves the epitaph, and he believed that this person would be Beatrice. Beatrice? Me? This is fate. It is fate that brought you to this day. I didn't really understand what Genji was saying. Surely the shock of seeing the gold still had me paralyzed. Come this way. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Yes, in that sense, it also makes sense to say that the title of Beatrice gets passed down to whoever solves the riddle <coughs> because Kinzo expected only Beatrice to be able to solve it. <coughs> Genji opened a closet. Inside it was a torso wearing a beautiful dress made of black cloth and golden stitching. When I saw it, I understood immediately. It was the witch's dress, the black dress worn by the Beatrice in the portrait. Change into this. This is... It is something you once wore. I've never worn a dress like this. However, I understood what Genji meant. This dress was one that Beatrice once wore. And the one who displays a miracle by solving the epitaph is Beatrice. By reaching this room, I succeeded the position of the real Beatrice. The one in the portrait. Why do I call myself Beatrice? Because the name of the golden witch who rules over Rokanjima's night is Beatrice. That's right. I wasn't the real Beatrice. I was a different witch, stealing the name of the witch from Kinzo's delusions. And now I have succeeded the real Beatrice. By solving the epitaph's riddle, my resurrection will be complete. I was the one who decided on that rule. However, this really was a ceremony to resurrect Beatrice. In the past, I believed that I could create my own fate with my magic. How ironic that one who would could control magic at will, would be guided by fate to this place. At that moment I had no choice but to truly accept and believe in this wor word called fate. And after I put this on, you will go to the master. Ready yourself. Oh, he's gonna be surprised. He's gonna be surprised as hell. I mean, he's waiting for it. I know, he's been waiting for it all this time. But you you can't tell me his first reaction when the door opens and Beatrice enters is not going to be... The fuck? <laughs> Wait here. Uh, okay. Master, it is Genji. It is I. <laughs> After Genji knocked, the sound of the study's door unlocking could be heard. Maybe this is where Kinzo died because he just had a fucking heart attack when he saw this. After a single glance telling me to wait, Genji entered alone. I cannot believe that this day has come. Fate can be such a strange thing. Kumasawa with, was with us too. I thought this dress, which didn't really suit me, would lead to a lot of jokes, but she didn't laugh at me at all. On the contrary, when she saw me, her expression had turned stern, as though a long-awaited day had finally come. 
My heart raised. Supposedly anyone should have been able to solve the epitaph. There shouldn't be anything strange about me solving it. Genji and the others kept wearing serious expressions and that, along with everything else, made this feel like some sort of grand ceremony. The suffocating silence continued. Eventually the door opened and Genji peeked out. Enter, Beatrice-sama. He was saying those words to me, but not to the person I had been until a short while ago. Go ahead, Beatrice-sama. Kumasawa also urged me forward with a respectful bow. Kenzo was probably waiting for me inside. What expression should I wear as I go in? How should I greet him? I don't have a clue. As the two of them motioned me forward, it was all I could do to avoid tripping over my dress as I walked. Kinza-san, she is here. Kinza was crouched on the ground as though kneeling before the portrait of Beatrice. At Nanjo's word, she slowly turned, still crouching. <gasps> Kinza's eyes were already red with crying. When he saw me, he groaned with wonder. Beatrice, Beatrice. Had he even forgotten how to stand up? He crawled over to where I was while calling out to me with the name of the woman he had loved long ago. I was too stunned to even move. Kenzo grabbed the hem of my dress, gripped it tightly, then curled up and sobbed. Beatrice, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I knew how you felt and yet I, I'm sorry. Please forgive me, please, please forgive me. The words weren't directed at me. However, just standing here like this was all I needed to do. Kinzel's moment of atonement, the moment he had spent half of his life searching for, had finally come. A human life is stained with sin. So humans seek forgiveness while they still live. However, in most cases, the person capable of granting such forgiveness is no longer on this earth. It was like that for Kinzo too. The one he saw no longer existed in this world. Instead, that forgiveness had been woven together by a miracle, and now Kinzo had received it. Beatrice, Beatrice, you need not forgive me, you need not say anything. I simply needed to apologize to you just once. Oh. Kinzo kept grasping the dress's hem and sobbing. The sins of humans are not forgiven from without. Forgiveness is found through regret and repentance. I want to believe that some sin, some fault of his, has been forgiven thanks to the way I look. Kinzo's sobbing gradually ceased, and he slowly looked up at me and rose. He looked unsteady. Nanja rushed forward to support him. Hold on, when did he die? Two, wasn't it two years before the before 1986? So basically this year. This is 1984, isn't it? And I think he died two years before 1986 because in 1985 they were still able to kind of fool the other siblings by pretending Kinza was just upstairs and mad and not well. And in 1986, it was becoming really difficult to do so. That must mean he died in 1984? Or at least makes it very likely. So maybe he died after this. So I see that you are alive. I'm glad. This time these words weren't directed through me. But at me. I hesitated, unsure how I should respond. I beg your forgiveness for keeping this secret from you all this time. No matter. Oh, I see. I suppose that Genji, before calling um, Shannon, I'm still saying this is Shannon, before calling her in, he probably just told Kinzo of the whole baby thing and that the baby actually survived and is Shannon. And this is why he See, says, I see that you're alive. I'm glad. He, this is not referring to to the the Beatrice he wants to apologize to, but now he sees her as the, the kid, the baby that survived. That's why this is like, this time he's looking at her. <clears throat> and that's, that's probably why Genji says, I beg your forgiveness for keeping this a secret from you all this time. No matter, I do not fault you, Genji. Considering the sin that I committed every single day until now has been necessary for my atonement. However, or rather, can be no doubt that today's miracle is a true one. By her own power, without anyone's help, she solved the epitaph before anyone else. Well done, solving such a difficult epitaph. Thanks. Indeed, your voice resembles your mother's. Even your face reminds me of that mother and daughter. There can be no doubt that Beatrice's blood flows through your veins. Yes. 
The traces of the Lady of Kuadodian in her youth are right there. Does my face look does my face look like someone else's? Beatrice Summer, please forgive me for keeping this a secret even from you. Your parents are Beatrice Summer and the Master. What? It's true. Until now, you have been raised as a child without parents. However, your true father is the master, and your true mother is Beatrice Summer. Is that a uh, really? I hope they will kind of leave out the the part where it's actually Beatrice's daughter, <laughs> and Kinzo's daughter, who is her mother. Yes, you truly are a descendant of Beatrice Summer. Is such a strange fate really possible? I've dreamed about it. Dreamed about what it'd be like to be the golden witch Beatrice, but that dream had been mine all mine alone. A dream that if I solved the epitaph and carried out its ceremony, I would revive as the true Beatrice. So is it okay to believe that since I've solved it, Beatrice really has survived has revived? I truly carry Beatrice's blood? Yes. There's no doubt of that whatsoever. It must have been hard for you to live until this day without knowing a parent's affection. And yet look at how wonderful you've grown. So you all knew about me? Genji, Kumasawa, and even Nanjo nodded wordlessly. Now that I think about it, there might have been lots of hints. I've always felt as though there was something special about me. Genji and especially Kumasawa always treated me very kindly. Then does that mean this day is a promised day, which would eventually have come no matter what? I don't understand anything anymore. It's all a miracle from God. A promised fate has led me to this day. Beatrice, no, Leon. That is the name I wanted to give you. It is your true name. Leon, I will now return to you everything that Beatrice gave me. I return to you the gold, as well as everything of the Shirumiya family, which was created by it. Kenzo stuck out a hand that looked like a rotting tree. On his finger was a ring with a one-winged eagle crest, the symbol of the Ushidumiya family had. I see, so she got it here. He pulled it off, grasped it tightly, and then held it out to me. I didn't know what to do. Slowly as though they were being drawn forward, I held out my hands, palms up. After pressing his fists against my cupped hands, Kenzo slowly opened his hands and let the ring drop. Leon, my child, all the ways your fate has been toyed with until today were caused by my sins. Please forgive me. You will now inherit my ring. You are the new Shidomiya family head. All of that gold belongs to you. I ask that you use it as you please and hope that it will be enough to heal some small part of the pain you have suffered. That trifling amount of gold may be nothing in comparison with the sin I committed, but even so it should be enough to bring you some comfort. Uh, thank you. Leon, I have one final request. What is that? Could you... call me... Uh, sorry, what did you say? Could you call me... father? I understand why you are not able No, I understand why you are not able to. I have not been a father to you in any way. Furthermore, you have been raised without knowing anything about a father. I realize that it's not a name you can call me by. And I realize that I have no right to ask this of you. But even with that in mind, please, if I could just hear that, I would have no further regrets. After being asked like that, could I possibly have refused? Even if I am his child, I truly cannot acknowledge him as my father, so it felt very strange to say it, and yet, I decided that saying it was the right thing to do. Only God can truly forgive sins, but though it may be temporary, people can be saved by the forgiveness of others. But, but, yes? Father. <laughs> that awkward word made Kinzo laugh. Drops of silver fell from both of his eyes. At that moment, the shadow that had covered his face was wiped away. Thank you, Leon, my child, and Beatrice as well. Thank you for this last chance to ask for forgiveness. Of course, I don't believe that I have been forgiven by this alone. I shall atone for the rest as I burn in the fires of hell. Ah, you Shidomi Akins have no more regrets in this life. None at all. No regrets or matters left unfinished. No reason to go back to your creepy face. Looking up to the heavens, Kinzo spread his arms as though facing an applauding audience, laughing at the top of his lungs. It was the final pleasure, pleasure known only by those who have been released from all regrets of this world. Kinzo's laugh weakened, and when it disappeared, he dropped to his knees like a puppet with its strings cut, and slowly fell to the ground. Master, 
Dr. Nanjo. Yes. Telling you, this is probably when he dies. Though their master had fallen, they walked up to him slowly. They already knew. Kinzo's soul had already burned itself out. After checking Kinzo's pulse, Nanjo shook his head and stood back up. It was a peaceful death. I don't think he had any regrets at all. It may be that the master died long before now. It was only his magic and tenacity that kept him here so long. And he finally had a chance to apologize to Beatrice Sama for everything and finished everything he had to do. Please rest in peace. I believe that you have redeemed yourself. Father, that was the one night reunion between me and my father and also our final farewell. This coat all belongs to you now. If you wish to exchange it for money, I can arrange for that. I hear it's worth 20 billion yen. From here on, any of your dreams in this world can be granted with money. Can buy? <clears throat> Should be can't be, I guess. Ho ho ho. It must be though tough to think of what to do with this much money when it suddenly comes your way. Chocolate. That's the answer. There's nothing I desire among the things money can buy, so for the present I would like to leave this here. Of course, I'm glad I have a lot of money. However, money can't heal the pain in my heart. You know what I just realized? It means when Eva finally solves the epitaph in, in episode 3, it's, it's already too late. It's not even hers. Because it has already been solved. I mean, then again, how would Beatrice be able to prove that at that point or Shannon? But technically, at th when Eva solved it, the gold was already not like it was it had already been sold so she just did it in vain <clears throat> money can't heal the pain in my heart i just want him to come back as you wish then it shall be left here also take this key what is this it is a key to the underground vip room if you use this you won't need to use that entrance contraption she was the only one who knew the answer to the epitaph riddle, and the only key to this place was now hers. At this point, she truly was the master of this golden VIP room. Where would you use the key, though? You are already the master of Rock Kenjima. You have the right to know all of this island's secrets. We should talk about Kuodolian, too. That's the mansion your mother lived in. I'm sure you've heard rumors about it. Kuodolian. There are two mansions on this island, one at either end. One is the mansion we know well, the other is a hidden mansion known as Kuodoria. Below this island are the remains of a military base built during the war. The master used that to travel between the two ends of the island. There's an underground pass in the back of this room and if you follow it, you will reach the basement of Kuodoria on the other end of this island. That is the secret mansion which only the master knew of. Of course that mansion also now belongs to the new head. It's the mansion your mother lived in. It will probably be worth taking a trip over this sometime. My mother. I've lived alone my whole life. The only person I've ever felt like calling mother is Kumasawa-san, who will always help me out. So there's a mansion where a mother I've never met nor seen lived. Who exactly am I? Ask any questions you wish. You now deserve to know everything. Right now I'm feeling very confused. I don't even know where I should start asking questions. But I'm sure I'll think of plenty of things to ask about. When I do, please tell me. As you wish. Also, being treated so respectfully like that is a bit uncomfortable. I'd be happy if you could talk to me the same way you've always done. If that is what you wish, then I will do so. Ho ho ho, that's easier for me too. Well, no. What will we do now, Genji-san? Kinzo-san is dead. I will tell Klaus and Madam that he has passed away. Then we must tell them that Leon Sama is the official successor to the headship. After all, from this point forth, you are the Ushidori family head. Me as the head? That's... And isn't Klaus Sama the successor? The one who solves the Epitaph's riddle is the successor. There exists a will specified this much. The master's final order was that you were the in to inherit everything. Please wait. I appreciate the sentiment, but I can't do the job of being the successor, and I can't accept such a big responsibility. I think it would be better for Klaus Sama to inherit that role. Are you certain? Today I have learned who I am. Everyone knows about their parents, but I didn't since the time of my birth. And here today I finally learned the truth. That alone is enough for me. 
But why? Couldn't you just... Hmm. I mean, I guess I understand in a way, because at this point she's kind of mostly over Balor. Apart from the small part in her that she mentioned earlier. I was about to say, couldn't you get be become the new head and use the new earned position to easily call Battler there or like ask Rudolf and so on to, to be able to contact Battler because now you're not a servant anymore so now it's not a weird thing to ask for that anymore. But I guess becoming a, the head just for that, maybe it, maybe it occurred to her for a few seconds and then she decided not to go for that because I mean she must have realized herself at this point that, that the battler she loves or loved or maybe still kind of loves was not is not the one, the real battler, but an image of him. So like even if she called him back, <coughs> probably wouldn't <coughs> wouldn't work out. So I guess maybe just becoming the head for that would would be kind of pointless. So I suppose it kind of makes sense that she's more like uh no i don't want to be the head of this weird family if i suddenly became the shidomiya family head how would klaus summer react how angry would madam be i don't want to become the head of it means making them feel like that today i learned who i am who gave birth to me how and when these are things i want to learn from them as time goes by that alone is enough but i'll take the gold <laughs> i am leon and i am the golden witch beatrice Knowing that is enough for me. I don't plan on calling myself the head. How some I can take that job? Is that your order, is the Ushidomiya family head? Yes. As you wish, Master. Then I will make it so. And please don't tell anyone about what happened tonight. I want to stay me. There's nothing I'd want to do with the Ushidomiya headship or the gold. I just... I want to wait here on this island as I have done in the past. I want everything to be exactly the same as it was. <coughs> That's my only wish. As you wish, Master. Everything that has happened tonight will not go beyond those present here. Kumasawa. Dr. Nanjo, that is the wish of the new head. If that's what you want, I have no objections. Kenzo sons will entrust everything to you. If this is what you want to do, none of us will complain. You say exactly the same as it was, but do you really mean exactly the same? With no differences at all? Yes, we'll keep this a secret. This place and the gold will be sealed away. If I need money, I will ask you about it then. That's enough for me. As you wish. I was about to say, if she even rejects the, the gold, she's stupid. Because... Yeah. The device leading to this place and the key both belong to you, and all of us swear to keep the events of this night a secret. Klaus Sama will be the successor, but in my heart you will be the only true successor. As you have ordered, we will behave the same way we always have, but please order us whenever it suits you. I see, that might be important later. You are my only master. Thank you very much. It could very well be that later when she decides to fucking murder everybody, Genji and others are in on it because they now serve her. <laughs> A vast mountain of gold and the ring of the Ushidomiya family head. The dress of the portrait Beatrice. And yeah, this also explains how the envelopes could even have the, the seal of the ring, because she has it now. <clears throat> and I became the true Beatrice, the Golden Witch, right here in my very own Golden Land. If I think about it, not much has actually changed, after all. Well, except you have a fucking shitload of money. How can you say not much has actually changed? After all, I've always been the Golden Witch. I've just had a few more people acknowledge that. Yeah, and you have enough money for the rest of your life now. November 9th, 29th, the day I became a true witch. Oh, I am one yet many. I am the Golden Witch Beatrice. The true ruler of Rock and Jima, and the possessor of endless gold, and yet I am in no way complete. I await the return of the one person I love. <laughs> Probably by a golden Lamborghini. That does sound kind of awesome. Okay, so, I mean, at this point, Shannon is still pretty down-to-earth. 
So I'm very curious what exactly makes her go ape shit and decides to fucking murder everybody. That is the end of my tale. Oh, is that all? But aren't the next two years pretty fun? We don't need them. After all we've heard in the past games about your inner conflict and how you suffered, you don't need to say anymore. You mean the conflict of the furniture with incomplete souls? There was a duel. The result had almost been decided. However, the year 1986 was incredibly merciless. Oh, but you cursed your fate. Yes, if it had been one year sooner, or else one year later. The duel would have been settled, though the way it got settled would have been different. Silently Claire hung her head, if only I had been given time, or else if I had been given time to worry. I hate everything. Why did it have to be 1986? I decided to abandon control over everything. Abandon control? Like the ceremony in which I inherited everything from the previous head, I decided to abandon myself to the fate known as a miracle. It may be more accurate to say that I abandoned myself to the choice of the roulette. I, we, could not even decide our own fate, so we let fate decide everything for us. Perhaps one of us will find what they seek, or perhaps all will be joined and released, or perhaps someone will put a stop to this folly. No matter which fate the roulette chose, I plan to obey its ruling. I will not resist fate. After all, whether I, whenever I have tried in the past, fate has always been heartless to me. Claire hung her head and let a single tear drop down. Humans will callously say that people possess infinite possibilities, however the endless witch knows how limited those possibilities really are. So out of her limited fate, she tried to create the infinite. By entrusting her fate to God, she tried to create the infinite. However, this did not mean that she was resigned to her fate. She spun the roulette of fate with an unshakable and certain will. A certain fate where absolutely no one could escape if the appetite was not solved. She sealed off the island with it, herself included. October 4th and 5th, 1986 were sealed away by an absolute and certain will, and she abandoned herself with that so short span of time and the one fate out of many that will be chosen on that island. And now my confession is over. Isn't that enough to place my motive for the crime? If you still do not know, I will say no more. It's not as though anyone could understand my heart anyway. Yeah. There's no need to say any more. Leon, after watching how I have wandered through a dead end of fate, do you see how great a hope you are to me? I'm a different possible you. The happiness you live in makes me jealous, but even more overwhelmed with happiness. The future you represent was a possible one. Right now, that fact alone is my salvation. I... Please live with enough happiness for the both of us. I'm glad I got to meet you once, at the end. You have my thanks, Lady Bancastel. I'm just carrying out your funeral. There's no need to thank me. Well, it's about time to end this. It's about time to send the dead to the land of the dead. Yes, this is my funeral after all. It's time for me to go back to where I belong. <coughs> Don't make that face. And please rejoice that you were not me. After all, I rejoice in that fact as well. I'll live. I'll live for the both of us. Thank you. Live in happiness, <coughs> and someday find yourself a wonderful person. I pray that you live as a human without awakening as a witch, that you have a whole and single soul and love one person with all your strength. I hope you live that sort of life. I will. Well, son, I thank you for being an observer. You aren't the one I truly wanted to understand me, but you have saved my heart. I understand you. I don't neglect the heart. Thank you. So, now that I have a splendid observer who understands me, I want to entrust my final moments to you. Are you sure you're okay with it being me? Yes. For me, the important thing is whether the person understands me, not how well I know them. The one I wanted to understand didn't. A person I don't know did understand. There's nothing sad about it. On the contrary, I'm grateful for this miracle. A person was able to understand even though he has no relation to me. You are a good observer and the only one who has managed to understand me. That connection is strong enough. Understood. I offer my heart to you, nameless and wonderful observer. Leon, stand back. Uh-uh. What's going to happen? In the mystery genre, there can be no death unless the detective performs the last rites. Oh. 
world just stopping your heart be enough? When you mourn the dearly departed, do you put just their heart into the coffin? Got it. That which was born from Earth will return to Earth. I'll return all of you to the Earth. Earth to Earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, illusions to illusions, and dreams to dreams. Right. Then let us begin. This is my burial. Whenever you're ready, let us start. This is almost like the end of my last game. Light gathered at Will's back and a sword materialized there. Slowly he drew it out. Its pitch black tip, which could neatly slice apart truth from fiction, swung once, leaving a black trail, and then again leaving a white trail. I'll cut the truth out from the fiction. Come. Following Will's lead, a similar sword appeared in Claire's hat. Its tip glinted silver, the opposite of Will's. First game, first twilight. Six corpses in the gardening shed. Oh, are we doing that now? Illusions to illusions. The corpse that cannot return to Earth returns to illusions. Yeah, Shannon wasn't dead there. Will's pitch black slash cut across Claire's body at an angle. The blade passed through her like she was water, but its tip sent golden flower petals scattering. First game, second twilight. Two corpses are close in a closed room, protected by a chain. Illusions to illusions. A chain of illusions can only trap illusions. What's that supposed to mean? Chain was not real? The razor thin black blur sent golden flower petals scattering again. First game, fourth twilight. The old head from the closed room study can find in a scorching furnace. Illusions to illusions. Let the man of illusions go to where he belongs. First game, fifth twilight. The last moments of the sacrificed boy with a stake in his chest. Illusions to illusions. The witch and stake of illusions can pierce naught but illusions. First game, sixth, seventh, and eighth twilights. Three corpses lying in the close room of the singing girl. Illusions to illusions. Illusions of the blind girl's song. Illusions of the closed room. Of course he has to speak in riddles. Well done. Yes, you really are splendid. That was a risky game from the very start. What if the guy really wanted to see that dead face anyway and just stepped inside? That's what it means to abandon oneself to fate. That's what your roulette is, isn't it? I guess they're talking about George and Shannon in the shed. Let us continue, second game first twilight. The six with their stomachs split in the closed room chapel. Illusions to illusions. The gold truth locks the door. Lock uh, of illusions. What? Second game, second twilight. The two who are close cannot even be close as corpses. Illusions to illusions. Illusions who have completed their role do not leave even a corpse behind because karma does not exist. Second game, fourth, fifth, and sixth twilights. In Natsuhi's closed room, none are left alive. Earth to Earth. No one will dispute that a coffin is a closed room. Second game, seventh and eighth twilights. The two flies to death by the red-eyed illusion. Earth to Earth. Illusions to illusions. No illusion can create a corpse. Every time the blade passed through Claire's body, golden flower petals flew everywhere. The petals covering her heart were being torn away bit by bit. The illusion of the witch was breaking down and becoming flower petals. Who died the last in the second game again? Third game, first twilight. Six corpses connected by the linked closed rooms. Illusions to illusions in the closed room ring, the end and the beginning overlap. Third game, second twilight. The corpses of mother and child lay together in the rose garden. Earth to Earth. No falsehoods in the final moments is told. I guess Shannon just killed them. Third game, fourth, fifth, and sixth twilights. Three corpses lying in the mansion. Earth to Earth. No falsehoods in their final moments is told. Third game, seventh and eighth twilight. The corpses of husband and wife lay exposed under the arbor. Earth to Earth. The obvious corporate wheels of mutual blade. Fourth game, first twilight. A massacring storm sweeps through the dining hall. Illusions to illusions, tales woven by the gold truth return to illusions. 
Fourth game, second twilight, the two youth face at twilight and pass away together. Illusion to illusion's tales woven by the gold truth return to illusion. What the fuck is, is he even saying? Fourth game, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth twilights. None of the runaways are left alive. Earth to earth, illusions to illusions, silent corpses adorned by fiction. Fourth game, ninth twilight, and none shall be left alive. Earth to earth, illusions to illusions. When fiction is shut up inside a cat box, it becomes true. I guess these are all hints. I'm guessing that episode 7 is not going to give you the answers to all the murders, but these are going to be hints. And then, if you want, you can think about it. <laughs> My guess is that it's written like this, because probably episode 8 will give you all the answers to the murders, and this is probably soon going to be the end of episode 7, and they just are going to give you a few more hints here. Cryptic hints, but hints nonetheless. So those who enjoy doing this uh, were able to um, try to decipher these hints while waiting for episode 8 to be published. This is my guess why this was done this way. Over and over again, Claire's body was sliced by the pitch black sword. As proof, the chapel was now filled with golden flower petals, which danced around like gold snow. It's beautiful. Who wouldn't want their last moments to be like that? The gold snow was like confetti at the finale of a show. The curtains were finally falling on the stage that was her. Then, one final question. Sure. Claire slowly raised her hands. The sword she held became golden rose petals and melted away. She stood there arms wide, waiting for the final strike. Who am I? Illusions to illusions. The promised reaper lowers the curtains on the tail regardless of the witch's will. The pitch black blade that will swung high. Cut down players four. At the same time, she was blown away by a gust of wind. Her human form crumbled in an instant, became a storm of golden flower petals, and was torn apart. After she was blown away, a golden heart remained in midair, but it too was swallowed by the torrent of wind and broke down into flower petals. The gold torrent of wind swirled around the chapel, then the swirl of petals scattered out of existence and vanished. A few remaining petals danced around like snowflakes, and those final vestiges decorated the chapel beautifully. A beam of light lit the center of the stage. There stood Claire, whose tale had ended, and then slowly, softly, she faced the audience and bowed. Applause spread throughout the room. The long, long tale she had just finished telling was being given a massive applause. It went on and on, and on and on. The stage slowly sunk into the darkness of oblivion. Behind the darkness and the curtain, Claire continued to bow in front of the unending applause and disappeared. People are born with sin and live life to obtain forgiveness from someone. Or perhaps they are born with riddles and live life searching for someone to solve them. Here, all of her riddles had been solved, leaving no lingering regrets behind. People are riddles. They want someone else to solve their riddle. They live life wanting someone to solve the riddle that they are, the most difficult riddle in the world. They want someone to look at the riddle they are, and they want that person to solve it. For her, that wish has been granted. 
Her soul will wander no longer. Sleep in endless peace in your cat box coffin. Though there had been so many golden flower petals flitting about like a blizzard, not a single one remained. Everything had become dust, vanishing as though there had been nothing there in the first place, and all was silent once more. Come to think of it, even the sound of rain is gone. The rain must have stopped at some point. Meeting you was her salvation. I hope so. She cursed herself in her inescapable dead-end fate and gave up. Meeting you, a happy miracle in her eyes, saved her in a way nothing else could. So don't make that face. Huh. That was a pretty tasteful ending for you. Ow, 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 or featherine. Only told me to carry out the funeral. Well, I pretty much just called a facilitator, you, and let you do everything. <laughs> thank you, Will. Mm. In Claire's place, I want to thank you. Thanks for cutting off all the lingering regrets of a me of a different fate. I thought I'd see a bit more head clutching and panic from you. I understand now. I realize how happy my life has been. If fate had toyed with me and if I was living in another world, I might have gotten stuck in the same dead end of fate. However, thanks to an extremely improbable bit of good luck, I live in this world. I now know how much that means, how much it's worth. What's up? Why the surprised look? I thought decent witches didn't exist, but I might have to change that theory. Don't worry, no need to change it. I only joined that kid's game to kill some time, and though I lost, I enjoyed playing. That kid died without folding up her game board. I just took charge of cleaning up as thanks to her for letting me play and because it's the loser's duty. I was sure you'd be a lot crueler than this. Crueler? I thought this would be a cruel game that neglects the heart. Yes, it was a cruel game. Though she claimed that the game was fantasy, I've brought you along and made it end as a mystery. The illusion of the witch has been spectacularly crushed and my little bit of revenge is complete. This tale of intertwined loves ends thanks to an absolute and certain willpower. Out of respect for that certain willpower, the Witch of Certainty made that kid a witch for just two days. Even within this limited span of two days, I've been able to enjoy an endless kaleidoscope. I won't be bestowing my favor, so no miracle will occur. However, even this ending is something the child wished for. I wonder which truth actually lay at the end of this endless tale. Who knows? Not being able to say that for sure. Is what makes it a cat box. When you open the box, you get a tale where no trace of the mansion remains and no one except Eva survives. Now that Eva has died without saying anything, all the truth is inside the cat box. Endless possibilities, all kept within a limited box. Now that I think about it, maybe the whole island where she lived and died was the Golden Land. If you can call a cat box a Golden Land, that is. By the way, Bella has written up the most fun tale imaginable of the inside of the cat box. You mean that book in Beatrice's coffin? That's right. It's the happiest possible tale for her, which he thought up himself. It was a really fun, love-filled, happy tale. I also think that tale was the most fitting one to put in her coffin. No, that's wrong. Huh? You heard Claire. You are her hope and her salvation. More than anything else, you living on in happiness will be her salvation. Right. Live happily. That's all you need to do to be that kid's miracle. Yes. I'll live happily enough for the both of us. I'm surprised you found this kid. Didn't you have to search through about 200,000 of them in that vast sea? Such trivialities are all I'm capable of. <laughs> and now the funeral is over. As promised, I've released the barrier. Once you leave, the time will start moving again like normal. So you're done with us now. If I don't get back quickly, Deanna will start scratching the curtains. We weren't together long, but thank you for your help. So long. Be happy for the sake of the hundreds of thousands of other yous. When he left the chapel, a beautiful after rain sky stretched out above him. That sky, which was a mix of rain clouds, gaps of sunlight, and the tint of twilight, had a beauty to it that couldn't be described in words. Will slowly descended the stone stairs, stepping through puddles. Then he waved without looking back and left the chapel behind later. His form and footprints gradually faded away until there was no trace left. Okay, time for me to disappear too. Goodbye, Leon. I have you to thank as well. I believe I said some fairly inconsiderate things to you. You have my apologies. 
you taught me something very important. What is it? No, it's nothing. It's been a century since anyone's thanked me, so I wasn't sure how to respond. Yeah, considering your usual attitude, I'm not surprised. Ben Castell shrugged, then floated up into the air. Then she looked up at the beautiful seven colors of light shining in through the stained glass and spoke as though someone was looking down on her from there. Ah, wah, 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 wah. Was that enough of an answer check for you? If you still don't get it, why not gather the other observer witches and have a tea party or something? Then you can listen to their theories. I mean, so I won't go any further than this. There are no witches who don't think. After all, witches who don't think either die or turn to seaweed. That's a weird thing to say. Yes, now you can look back and have a drink, while seeing how much of your theory is right. I'm tired of playing the part of the bad guy, and of being a Miko. You're done with me now. Bye, Leon. And bye to you too, Observer Witches. Goodbye, bitches. Ben Castle burst and disappeared. A single golden flower petal glittered. Leon picked it up. It was the only trace of a miracle that remained in this chapel. At that time, cheery voices could suddenly be heard. It was the relatives. They came out of the waiting room one by one. So this is where you were, Leon. I was looking for you. Mom, my apologies. I was just thinking about something. Looks like the rain's finally stopped. Finally some good weather. Everyone, let us return to the mansion. I have been told that Beatrice's funeral is over. Dad, where's the head? He'll be here in a sec. Today was pretty crazy. And playing along with Dad's little funeral show was a real pain. You shouldn't say that. It was a very important ceremony. That's right. I think it was very important for Father. I'm starving. Goda san, think you could cook something up for us? Yes, ma'am. I'll prepare some tea at once. Where's Leon? Lend me a hand. Uh, our family had. There you are. As Kinzo came out after the others, Leon ran up to him. You did very well today. Beatrice's funeral is now complete. Yes, and I'm sure that Beatrice's soul was saved. How could you know that? I was with Beatrice until a second ago, and I saw her leave on her journey with no regrets. That's how I know. I guarantee it. I see. If you say it, then it must be so. The relatives left the chapel one by one. Leon left too, giving Kinzo a shoulder to lean on. A beam of sunlight peeked through the clouds, looking like a staircase leading up to heaven. I knew it. That's why I didn't stop at 11, because it felt like we were pretty close to the end. Oh, fucking right. I'm not doing, gonna do this uh, now, but yeah. Finished episode 7, so we can continue on to the finale. Very soon, I hope.